the real Martian has arrived at NASA. This is cool. This is like the museum for everybody. Check that out. So happy to be here. Couldn't be more excited. President and CEO here at Space Center Houston, and we are so delighted to welcome all of you to our inaugural Planet Earth Dinner and Celebration. I'm really pleased now to introduce some of the inventors and innovators working in Space City who are doubling down on NASA research and also research in the private sector. They're bringing us new technologies to market, not only advance progress toward deep space exploration, but also make sustainable living widely accessible for all of us here on Earth. The founder and CEO of Eating Growth System, Bart Womack, is a futurist, investor, producer, and inventor. Over the last 30 years, Bart has built businesses and executed ideas in a wide range of industries, helping to catalyze cultural movements and inspire generations of consumers. He's also the inventor of Eden's first product, the LifePod. I'd like to welcome to the podium Mr. Bart Womack to share a few words. Wow, what an incredible honor to be here. Many years ago, at Eden, we looked to the future and we saw a problem on the horizon. We knew that there was going to be a crisis in food production moving into the future for a lot of different problems that get into sustainability and the very nature of the structure of how we grow our food. And at that time in 2013, even though we were on two separate sides of the country, Jeff Raymond and I were both coming to the same conclusion, which is the only way that we could face this future was to take next generation farming technologies and leverage them and create solutions. And that's what Eden is, is a solutions company. And so what we are trying to do, now that we are beginning in the first phases of this food crisis, is bring those solutions to the public so that people have an opportunity to take their own destinies into their own hands and grow their own food in sustainable, healthy ways that can benefit themselves, the environment, their communities, their families, and their countries. And that's why our slogan at Eden is, feed the future. And if there's anything that's important in that slogan, it's the idea, just like here at NASA, just like here at Space Center Houston, of a positive future, a human future. Any one of us can go online and we can be inundated with nightmare visions of fear and dystopia of what will be. But NASA was founded on the idea of a positive future. The idea that we could take technology, that we could take our dreams and ideas and create something better better for ourselves, better for our families, and better for all of humanity. So with that said, I'll now invite my partner, Jeff Raymond, up to the stage, and he's gonna tell you how we're all going to feed the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Last week I was up in North Dakota at a space agricultural conference where I was on a panel and I was asked, what do you see as one of the major issues that are stopping people from getting an indoor ag, or how can space help with this? Of course, I said things like power and sensors and cost, but I ended with the fact that what we really have is an average age of farmers that's now exceeding 55 years of age. We're just not inspiring the youth of our day to get into indoor farming or farming in general, and the costs are getting so high, it's very, very difficult. So I said that it's really interesting is when we look at NASA and we look at things we've done at NASA, and I wanted to be an astronaut, so I joined the Air Force. Is, that was the path I was on, and then the medical thing stopped me from that. But it's inspirational. And I've always felt somewhat naively that if, if we could just see Earth from space, it would change all of us. It would change how we see each other. And that is actually what we need right now. We need to stop being divided, and we need to come back together again. The world just wants to tear us apart. But when you step back and you think Carl Sagan, you're like, there's two things we all have in common here. We live on that thing and we eat food that comes from that thing. The rest of it we can figure out as we go, but there are some challenges that are coming. We've got this big number of people that start to show up on the planet, and there are a lot of challenges that go with that. We need everybody working together. There's not one solution. We need all solutions to help with this. And I believe what you guys are doing here and supporting this amazing building and all the work that William and team have put together is you're inspiring the youth so they can start to understand what this chart is saying. 66% of the fresh water that we have, the aquifers, they're emptying faster than we can fill them. We're just sucking out so much water for agriculture, and a lot of that water is lost to evaporation. 
70% increase in agricultural output is required globally. Now you'll hear this number said in a bunch of different ways, but one way to look at it is something the size of Canada. We need to go find something the size of Canada to start feeding everybody. Now these are problems that in America, we're not gonna feel as quickly as other places in the world because quite honestly, we have abundant food uh, right now, but the water crisis and everything that we're seeing, especially in California, you can see the land actually starting to drop NASA satellites flying overhead measuring this stuff. It can't be solved by one person. There's not any one person who's gonna stand up and say, Eureka, I have solved world hunger. That's not how this is gonna work. We need to have a team of people that are gonna to come together and actually help solve this problem. And one of the things that I wanted to try to introduce tonight is we look to space for inspiration. Who's seen the movie The Martian? Okay, equal, who's watched the YouTube channel called The Real Martian? All right, all right, so there's a few folks. My other alternative personality is I am known as The Real Martian on YouTube, and you're gonna understand why tonight that is important and prudent for this conversation. Basically, there's a whole bunch of things that if you start designing systems for space, if you start there, I wanna put something on Mars. The funny thing is, is it makes it really great for putting it here on Earth. So all the stuff that's being inspired here, I was, I was walking through that hall over there today when I first got here and you just see a 3D printing, you see AI, you see robotics, LED lights, those are all NASA spin-offs. That's all NASA technology. So when you guys are here and you're supporting everything you're doing, you are inspiring people like me who are gonna do things like what you see here tonight. And then I'm going out there with my YouTube channel and I'm trying to get other people involved. And now working with Bart and the team at Eating Grow Systems, we're actually gonna transition into taking ideas that NASA helped inspire and turning them into things that are actually gonna feed people, such as this system diagram. We're gonna try to grow fish and food indoors and then we're gonna also produce energy. We're gonna suck in more CO2 than what we produce and we're gonna be waste negative. We're actually gonna bring in organic matter rather than just leaving it out to spoil. As we do that, we'll also be producing methane. It's not the cow fart problem. This is the actual, we want methane to be used for energy production because it's such a clean fuel to burn. You can go check out our website here, realmartian.com. That'll take you to this little YouTube channel that we're gonna talk about a little bit here and you're gonna see why I think I can say that I am the real Martian. 10 years ago, I sat down and my, my dad unfortunately had just passed away and he was about six months away from retirement. And he was the hardest working man I ever knew. I was on that same journey, like I, I'm gonna be safe, I'm gonna have a career, I was working for a Boeing subsidiary, I was in the Air Force. And it just occurred to me like, at any moment, it can change. And so <laughs> my wife, God bless her, supported me and, and we decided to come up with a plan to build that system that you saw. 80 feet long by 40 feet wide by 22 feet tall, passive solar greenhouse, 16 and a half kilowatts of solar panel, an anaerobic digester, what is that? That's the thing that takes organic matter and turns it back into its nutrients and recycles it. It's really amazing. It's been with us for thousands of years, but we just kind of forgot about it. And we also grew rainbow trout indoors in, in the winter, in the summer, 110 degrees outside, negative four outside, the thing made it through the whole thing until we got a lot of snow, I'll tell you about that. We grew all sorts of stuff you can see, just I'm gonna click through them here, we had the different lettuces, no dirt in the system, we had green beans, broccoli, uh, we had green onions and carrots, there was a whole bunch of stuff, garlic and kiwi, kiwi went really, really bonkers. Uh, we had watermelon and cantaloupe, we're from Pacific Northwest, Washington State, and we're in the mountains about 2,400 feet. So I'm thinking at this time, I really am like the Martian, like, yeah, check out my potatoes, right? Lots of cool stuff that we did here. And this is stuff to inspire the next generation. All the herbs, everything you have, we are growing them. We did peach trees, almonds, apples, clementines. We had grapefruit. We have banana trees growing up north. You can do these things when you're using indoor ag, but the key thing is energy. So I'm going through, and there's some microgreens that we grew, and I'm feeling like Mark Watney at this point. Woohoo! We did it! It's awesome, man. Life is good, right? So we keep on going and we got more stuff happening. And just like in the Martian, when his habitat blew up, so did ours. Only instead of a big blowout because of a windstorm on Mars, ours actually collapsed under two feet of snow that fell in just two days. So it was an inch of snow per hour. At this point, I'm feeling much more like this. Uh, that is how I felt at that point. Like, you've got to be kidding me. As an entrepreneur, one of the key things I'm learning is, you know, if you don't have skin in the game, people don't really listen to you. Well, my wife and I, we decided, because of the blessings the good Lord has given us, to take $250,000 of our own money and build that thing. So I really did feel that way. 
That's a lot of pain right there. And then it makes you stand back and look at, you know, what did we actually do? And we were trying to make a decision. Do we keep going or do we not? And the bottom line is that Mark Watney's got nothing on us. We're doing it for real. We're taking the ideas that NASA has inspired. This young kid who looked up at the stars and was thinking about Apollo and seeing the space shuttle go. I'm here now as an aerospace engineer, chief operations and technology officer of a company that's bringing together people that we need to solve this problem. We need the botanists, we need the electrical engineers, we need the environmental control, we need people, we need scientists, we need engineers, we need business people, we need a team. We need our community back. So we've started Eating Grow Systems and what we have done is take that idea and now we're on a very clear mission. We want to go help provide sustainable food and energy independence to local communities around the world. And what does that mean just real fast? It means we want to build fishing poles and teach people how to fish again. We don't want people to have to be dependent to go to HEB or anywhere else. If they want to do that, we believe you need to do that. But we want to empower people, especially underrepresented and disadvantaged communities that absolutely do not have the means to take care of themselves right now. We are looking for people to partner with so we can truly go help feed the planet. We're going to do that by using the replicator technology from Star Trek. What we would like to do is be able to have people go up to the machine and say, please give me some food. For uh, people a little bit older in the room, you might remember the Jetsons. Instead of having their food and having to grow it out in the, the yard, they just went up to a machine and said, please give me food. We were actually working on taking everything we did there and getting it all built. We went to start getting all the permits and everything for it. And at the time, I was living off the savings. And they were like, this is so amazing. This is the best thing ever. We're so excited for this. We can't wait to approve it. It'll be six months. Just like in The Martian, you have to persevere. You have to keep moving forward. In the face of failure, even when you have the red tape, you've got to keep moving forward. How much can you take and keep moving forward? So we pivoted to a mobile version of it. This is where Bart and I come into play. We took his idea, my idea, threw it together, and we actually bought the trailer, we're cutting on it, and then this little thing called COVID came around and really made this hard. So you can see this journey. We built this, we put all this money in, we're taking all this risk, and we're going through it, and this is what we need to start teaching kids again. This is what you're doing here as you help people see this. You inspire them to keep going. And that is what we've been doing, so we keep pivoting as we get hit with the next little disaster. And now we're here with an indoor food growing robot. This thing is right over there. It works. We've grown a lot of different food on it. And it is inspired, and it's a spin-off of Dr. Raymond Wheeler's work down at Kennedy. Also working with Dr. Gary Studi, also former NASA, to help us with this. So NASA and the work that they're doing is directly impacting us. We have a few different versions of it, and we're going a whole lot of different props and everything. Uh, that can go with it. In addition, we can grow fish. So giant freshwater prawns we can grow in these towers and then we can use their waste and bring it up and put it into the actual towers for the nutrient solution. So instead of having to go buy more nutrients, you can actually grow fish. You just need fish food at that point. And we're also growing potatoes, Mark Watney potatoes. We want to make it to where people can go out in their garage or maybe even have these in their home one of these days as we continue to refine it, and they can just grab the food and take it right out of the tower and go cook. I was at Texas A&M two days ago, and they're doing genetic research, which is just phenomenal. It's amazing what they're doing. And their problems, though, I, I changed their paradigm, and that's what this whole food thing is. It's about changing paradigms. They said, well, we're doing all this research to try to make it so that when you pick the tomato off the vine, it doesn't ripen fast because it needs to be shipped. It has to go from Mexico, it has to go from California, it has to go from Houston, it has to go all over the United States and we don't want our food to ripen too fast. To challenge them, what I want is something that roots faster, grows vertical, and ripens faster. Because I want them to go out there and grab it and eat it. I don't want to store it. I don't want to pay all the money to transport it all. I want them to have their food right next to them. We have this tower. It's computer controlled. We have additive manufacturing, like what we have over in the Inspiration Tunnel over there. AI that helps control it. Growing food is hard. It's really, really hard. That's why people don't do it. That's why the average age of farmers is over 55. So we are using AI selectively to help learn how to grow food. And as the AI gets smarter, again, NASA helped with all this. Just the computers alone come from NASA. We're able to make it easier for people to grow food. We took a high school graduate who's never grown food before and is growing food successfully out of these towers with two hours of talking time. We also have towers up in Fargo, North Dakota. Negative eight degrees outside, but we're growing food indoors. This is just a a little peek of what we can do with this. And because of the size of the towers, we can actually go in to spaces that 
people already in and just roll our towers right in. We don't have to sit there and recreate everything and have millions of dollars. We also have our app because you've got to have an app in today's world, but you've really got to be able to control this tower. You have other things to do. You have the single mom taking kids everywhere. You know, God bless them. They don't have time to sit there and watch and monitor their food, so we use technology. NASA inspired technology to help them do that. There's crazy little things called watchdogs that are constantly sitting there just watching the system, looking for something to go wrong so the human doesn't have to be in the loop. The human can be on the loop. This makes it much, much simpler for them to grow food because they can go out and do other things. And just like NASA, we have a mission control of our own. We sit here as we move these things out into communities, out in people, and we have a system where we're monitoring it remotely, which is talked about right over there where we want to be able to monitor things from Earth that are happening on Mars, that are happening on the moon, that are happening in the space station. We're taking that same concept, NASA-inspired work, and we're bringing it here to help grow food. We're using AI, as I talked about earlier, so it can monitor the systems and not have to have a human doing it, and then it changes the settings based on the conditions outside. We're putting together a food app that allows people to have a digital farmer's market. One of our partners is here tonight that's helping us with that. And this allows people, as they grow things, they can throw it up on the marketplace. I have too many carrots, I need some lettuce, I want to make a salad, somebody else has broccoli, let's trade. The good old days coming back. Just building community and bringing everything back together is something that we want to do. And we're also, just like NASA, we have unmanned food growing robot here. We have a control system that as we teach that control system how to get smarter with all of this, we can actually start transitioning it through its different phases and start growing food, making it easier, giving everybody the same AI, the same software, the same capabilities, all those lessons learned in their own garden. So we can take that technology and just help grow more food. It's been really amazing to be up here tonight. Uh, this is a dream of mine to just be able to walk on these grounds. It's like hollow grounds for me, you have to understand. Like just coming to NASA, being invited here. William and team, you have an amazing location. Eden, you guys are awesome. And thank you so much for supporting us and bringing us all together. And thank you all very much for your time. Here we are. I think this is the veggie program, if I'm not mistaken. So, space crops. That's all us, baby. All right, so there's some questions that everybody asks about the astronauts, right? And there is one question that's number one above all else. And here, we are going to answer it. The space toilet. There you go. That's how astronauts go to bathroom in space. And over here, not to be outdone, is the sleep station. This is how they sleep. A little thing they crawl into there. And then they crawl into bed. They got their laptop there. It all floats. Books. Toiletries. Pretty cool stuff. Oh, man. I need a lot more time here. <laughs> This place is cool. I mean, talk about a place that you can come and inspire kids. Uh, Space Center Houston is definitely a place that if you want to get your kids into technology, they've got robotics, they've got 3D printing, uh, additive manufacturing, they've got, I mean, all sorts of cool things and it's very, very kid friendly here. So it is a blessing to be able to be here. So I'm so thankful to God right now for this opportunity. So.